Casey Mokami and Emmanuel Inonda is with us as well. Yes, I'm here. Yes, you're. What's what up? Uh, Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter, YouTube, all our streams are up. So remember, yeah. you can catch that conversation there. You can also um, use the numbers that are scrolling on the bottom of your screen to ensure that you are part of this conversation. We also have Francis Ode. Finally, we have you here, Ode. Okay. <laughs> I hope you've been well. Yeah. All is well. Uh, we thank God. All right. We are seeing more numbers of Corona, so but yes, we thank God for making us be well today. All right. So even as you speak of coronavirus now, the numbers in the country we are at 161 confirmed COVID-19 cases. And just, um, we were trying to do a little math earlier on. Mujua sisi ni watu wa mazimatic. So of this 161 cases, 55,074 people have actually been tested for COVID-19. Now, this is only 2% of the numbers tested that has actually turned positive, approximately 0.0.2% of the actual Kenyan population. And I am wondering, Emmanuel, these numbers... Why do they bother us so much while well, people, people have, have suffered more um, from floods, um, other um, natural calamities as well that have been taking place in the country, and diseases as well? Why are we giving prominence to a disease that is only affecting 0.02% of the population in the country right now? Just the other day, I saw cholera outbreak. He's also claiming lives, and no one is focusing his or her attention to that. Same to the flowers, just the way we've said. I don't know, I don't really know the, why we are giving it too much attention, the coronavirus, uh, instead of also giving other uh, pandemics, other diseases, other majanga mengine attention. Because uh, pe pe so many people are dying in the floods. We've seen that, landslide, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, the attention is being given to corona, corona only. So I'm mm -hmm. still wondering whether... Why, why, why just Corona? Because, or we are just following the trend worldwide because mm -hmm. we saw the uh, first world countries uh, testing and uh, quarantining people. Yeah. So I don't know if it's our own or mm -hmm. we are just following other people from outside. But I don't think we should give, we should give attention to everything that is trying to claim lives. You know, lives uh, are uh, very right. important. Okay, Emmanuel, I'm yes. wondering if Ode feels the same. Do you feel mm -hmm. this is just a matter of trending topics. We have seen something trending and we are going to actualize it despite our context here in Kenya. You know, Kenya is a very unique country, first of all, with a lot of problems. I, I know you say unique like that, I feel <laughs> like laughing because what, what might come out of your mouth next? <laughs> Why are we being unique all day? <laughs> Imagine a country uh, with uh, more than uh, one uh, problem, that is a low-cost inversion, we have flooding, mm -hmm. Uh, we, are, we are having uh, matters to do with cholera, mm -hmm. and there's the big one, uh, uh, there's, uh, there's uh, uh, corona. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, we still have HIV and malaria. Mm -hmm. And, and recently, the the cholera, yeah? Yes, uh, so uh, Kenya is just unique, mm -hmm. but uh, I think we are just following uh, the trend. Mm -hmm. uh, how I wish we would uh, we could uh, get our own our own uh, recipe of uh, dealing with our own issues rather than uh, going to uh, the big the big name Corona mm -hmm. because as we see now uh, we are having so many problems which uh, I mean with with, with a lot of uh, uh, citizens uh, crying left right and centre we are having hunger mm -hmm. people are dying. Mm. Uh, and and, and the, the government seem to, I mean, sh shun away from uh, all this and uh, think about giving press releases and press conferences on Corona. I mean, we can get this stuff uh, uh, to uh, other. Uh, and and as you say that we need our own Kenyanized solutions. Today we have noted that the numbers in Kibera have actually. Do you call it Kibera or Kibra? It depends on which <laughs> end of, of yeah. <laughs> schools you went to, yeah? <laughs> so Kibera, as I would call it, is actually risking lockdown right now as COVID-19 numbers rise in this area. Emmanuel, lockdown, what's our Zana? 
partial lockdown as partial as, lockdown yeah? in Kibra mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it can work because uh, we know the population there is huge mm -hmm. then the people from that area they mm -hmm. are hostile when it comes to being restricted to do something uh, and then again being a slum and we have people mixed people mixed people down there who have most of them they don't they are not employed they don't have formal jobs mm -hmm. they just do your kali so assuming and, and when you say that Emmanuel it brings me to the fact that maybe a partial lockdown is what is required in this area to ensure that the disease does not spread especially when you look at the fact that most of these people actually live hand to mouth I don't think so, so. a partial lockdown Emmanuel would mm -hmm. mean that the government is providing food to these people on a which, regular basis which, which government well, what do you mean? We have a government in place. Has it done it before? We have seen other areas, Isli, no. Old Town, Mombasa. Let's take example of uh, Mukuru Slum, mm -hmm. where the government said we are going to give the uh, slum dwellers 10 tons of food. Mm -hmm. They were still uh, complaining up to now, the food is not yet there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the government might have the goodwill to give out the food, but the people who are going to supply, mm -hmm. they'll pocket it. So that's what I'm saying. Let's and, take and the Emmanuel, case of all that, that, is, that is not just a Kenyan problem. Mm. One of the problems is, of course, um, people in the middle between where the government releases this money and the people getting it, and maybe um, the resources do not trickle down as effectively as we would want them to. Another problem that has been cited is the fact that when these rations are actually given, very little amounts of um, people actually do not use this food in the way that they're supposed to. Or I don't know if you have seen this clip where Museveni is trying to show people <laughs> of Uganda exactly how to ration your food. Because people in, in Emmanuel's neighborhood, you will be given five kilos of maize flour and you're going to <laughs> consume that in two days. <laughs> Have you seen the video oh, already? Okay, I've seen the video. However, you see, uh, when it comes to Kenya, mm -hmm. I said we unique. L let's take uh, uh, Kibra uh, risking that lockdown. I want you to remember Kibra, 60% uh, uh, of uh, Kibra residents uh, live under one dollar a day, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one dollar a day, they, they don't get it in Kibra. Mm -hmm. They go to, they go to, they walk all the way to uh, to um, industrial area. They walk to uh, homes to, to wash uh, clothes and all that. So mm -hmm. if you walk the entire Kibra, you, you risk seeing masses coming out to say, <laughs> exactly, I, I concur yeah. with the day. That's why I was saying, Tracy, mm -hmm. you cannot lock these people down, even if it's partial. Mm -hmm. They lay around. You, know, you, know, you know, Emmanuel, even as you say that these people, you know, the only reason that they would protest if, is if they're not given the resources by the government. And, and we let us not. Um, tr I, I don't know. Keith is not here with us today. He's usually the government <laughs> spokesperson <laughs> on this <Agent>. show. <laughs> <laughs> but if these people are actually given the rations that they need, we might actually see lower numbers in these areas. And before we even speak of, I don't know, a video that you might not have a clue about. Yeah, <laughs> this is what Museveni is urging the people of Uganda to do. One kilo of maize flour. When my dad was here, cooked it on my instructions. They go to me, this one here. Uh -huh. Now this one, I tried to estimate. And said, suppose, suppose I eat something like this for, for one meal. Okay, something like this. Uh, so this one is.
2,600 grams. 2.6. Emmanuel, do you think the people who are in these areas actually have a weighing scale to be able to determine this is the amount of <laughs> ugali that you should have on Monday, this is the amount you should have on Tuesday? Unless if the president appointed a committee mm -hmm. to, give a, to give away weighing scale to these slum dwellers, just like Museveni is doing. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's traditional ways of thinking. Because mm -hmm. how do you expect a household of 10 people mm -hmm. to have a weighing scale or Kupima Ugali to mm -hmm. distribute it to people? <laughs> mm -hmm. How is it applicable? <laughs> You know, just uh, some I, I, Emmanuel, some I really love how um, President Museveni actually gives examples. You saw the other examples, day, he was yeah? doing gym in mm -hmm. his house, yeah. eh? his mansion, mm -hmm. asking people who can jog. Mm -hmm. Remember, we have people in slums who cannot even walk two steps before getting to the other house. Yeah, but what do you mean by two steps? You stretch your hand, you're in yeah. the kitchen, Emmanuel. You're in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So, whatever Museveni is doing... Yeah. I think uh, I have. Uh, I don't. I don't have a proper word to give it to him. <laughs> Leave alone what Museveni is doing. Let's come back to Kenya. <laughs> now today, um, Health CS Mutahi Kagwe actually announced that he will be doing a tour of the counties that have been affected by COVID-19 just to ensure preparedness. Today, the briefing was actually in Machakos. Ode, what difference do you think is going to this is going to make? As I said earlier, uh, mm. COVID-19 needs a different approach. Like, uh, But this is different. Well, Africa. he has been in Nairobi the whole time. Maybe he's hoping by him moving to the county, COVID maybe county that is going tour. to make a difference. Coronavirus county tour. Get <laughs> <laughs> this right. Uh, you only, uh, like right now, we're having a big problem in Nairobi and Mombasa mm -hmm. with other counties uh, recording a low percentage of uh, corona infections and cases. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't, to me, that it, it only makes it uh, enticing. Uh, you, you just want to uh, get from one point to another. Mm -hmm. But uh, the big problem is corona is in Kenya. What mm -hmm. are the mitigations? What are the mitigation measures mm -hmm. or to either suspect or reduce the disease, mm -hmm. uh, the corona, the coronavirus? You, you, you know, I, 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 I am really afraid all day because. The fact that Nairobi actually has the highest number of COVID-19 cases, I know for a fact that C.S. Mutahi will not be moving alone as he does his... Emmanuel, you're calling, you're calling it a coronavirus tour. What are corona you calling county it? Oh, corona, tour. Corona corona virus county tour. Coronavirus county tour. Because <laughs> after two weeks, yeah? then another uh, budget will come out. They say, okay, we spent 10 yes. million mm -hmm. on fuel to Machakos and mm -hmm. other counties. Mm -hmm. Uh, the county tour alone took this amount of millions. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I don't think we, we need to be announced those numbers like daily. Mm -hmm. You should better announce measures that the government is taking mm -hmm. to uh, prevent this uh, virus. The measures the government is taking to ensure the economy com comes back to normal. And, 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 and I really hope that these areas, Emmanuel, have because actually put in the measures. I think I understand where he's coming from, mm. just to ensure that these places have um, enough hospital capacity and all. But the fact that he, ha he actually has to move around, yet still at his home turf in Nairobi, where he has been all through, the numbers are still high. I don't know what effect him being in Nairobi has really gotten us anyway. So I really hope we will be seeing him even as he tours these areas, announce new measures, as you guys say. But, the, but what the, really... The funny what, thing is, he's going to announce from the certain location. Mm -hmm. huh? What is he taking back? I mean, hmm? Yes, I mean, uh, my, my, my problem is, uh, for example, if today uh, he could uh, announce uh, results from uh, maybe the Namanga border, mm -hmm. you see that uh, <laughs> when he takes their uh, uh, machines and... Uh, and, and testing this testing equipment mm -hmm. to me it, it it works well because there's something he's going to do there he's mm -hmm. at least taking a solution or uh, than uh, to, to the to the drivers mm -hmm. uh, there are machines that are coming there mm -hmm. therefore if he announced uh, numbers from there there's no problem but as we speak right now uh, uh, at, a, at an investigative angle we are going to get uh, another big budget 
that has been uh, that has been uh, used uh, in this tour uh, that is yet to be i mean a, a budget that to, and, and, to and be, this is why be, this is why you guys should not be afraid of this budget that these people are going to use now over 1500 people have been arrested during this pandemic period for flouting the measures that the government has been putting in place <laughs> now get this what really uh, <laughs> surprised me <laughs> is the fact that the fines that these people are given in court range from 200 shillings to 1500 Kenya shillings. I feel like this means that as long as you have your 1,000 you bob, 1, in, bob in your pocket, you mm. go about your business. How do you feel about this, Emmanuel? So it's a new trend. It's funny. It's a funny way of uh, dealing with this because uh, now the Kenyans will, after the fine, the 1,500 fine or 200 shillings fine, you'll find most of them are flouting the rules because they can they can afford the for the fine. Mm -hmm. What I thought could be a better thing is try to increase the fine so that when someone thinks of flouting the rules that could endanger uh, more people into being infected with this virus, mm -hmm. Uh, you, you can think twice, but 200 shillings, 500, then it's a And, and I feel the fact that um, the reason actually as to why this fines are very lenient. We have seen reports that the peak of this disease might actually hit home in August, September, Ode, maybe we should just learn how to live with this virus. Uh, the WHO already announced this, and uh, for me, I feel it's a high time we embrace the norm. Mm -hmm. uh, this, uh, I mean, this is beyond the norm because if I if, uh, if I am uh, found to uh, break this rule mm -hmm. and I have two hundred shillings, I mean, I'll be laughing all the way to uh, to to the court. And uh, to me, that's a slap on the face. Mm -hmm. uh, I strongly feel that uh, if we have to do this, uh, it's all it's a matter of discipline and common sense. I mean, when HIV broke in Kenya and in the world, in the world, everybody had a panic. Mm -hmm. But I don't see any 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 uh, I mean laws uh, being uh, put uh, in place to to curb this until 2003. Mm -hmm. There is another 2012 on HIV. But again, it took longer. But right now, you know, coronavirus is mutating and mutating every day. Yes, and we sure. are having more and more uh, research being done. So mm -hmm. you, might, you might not wear a, a, a mask and be caught and go in, uh, in court and uh, you pay 500 or, or 200. Mm -hmm. But again, a new study says that uh, you might, uh, young uh, people are getting stroke. What uh, I mean between a stroke and going to court, <laughs> what is important? <laughs> <laughs> well, interesting sentiments there. I really hope as the arrest and charge people after this um, popular former member of parliament um, is feeling better. I hope we will be seeing charges just as we saw for the deputy governor, Kilifi, because um, reports indicate that she actually hosted people in her house for Akesha just to be able to fight... <laughs> <laughs> the pandemic because they were trying they were struggling to pray for us they actually caught the virus out so i really hope we, they, they, after she gets better we will see charges against her as well out of the people she hosted mm -hmm. eight of nine of them mm -hmm. got uh tested positive so okay. it it asks it begs the question it it, it takes me back to the animal farm whereby Mm -hmm. all, all animals are equal, but others are more equal than others. Mm -hmm. We've seen the police arresting people in different estates. They were converging in one house, one house. But mm -hmm. when it comes to Rwanda, the, the action is a little bit low and uh, loose. So and, 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 and I hope this is mm -hmm. actually going to help people who are actually begging for the reopening of churches, Tafadali. You see, any sort of conglomeration, there is no... <laughs> what, what do I call it? There's no special treatment. In the front of God, we are all equal. So if you are getting corona, <laughs> everybody is actually <laughs> yeah. at risk of contracting these disease. Now, moving on, there is a looming food crisis in Kenya. The government is planning to open the market to imported maize, even as the price of maize flour is set to rise. Now, hear this right. As we face a potential hunger, the government is set to destroy tons of maize due to poor preservation. The maize is set to be given to cement manufacturers to be used 
as fuel, guys. <laughs> we are in the middle of a food shortage, <laughs> but we are actually destroying maize. Ode, make it make mm. sense. Ode said it's a unique country. Now, first of all, uh, I must say, uh, we are in an era where things just happen and uh, you, you get shocked and move on. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, uh, the, the already research says that uh, 2020, uh, around 1.3 uh, million Kenyans need, uh, they are in short of uh, I mean food. Mm -hmm. And uh, this necessity, last year it was 2.6 uh, million people. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, with, with, the, with the shortage of food and we are having again locusts coming into our, uh, our farm mm -hmm. and then floods coming in mm -hmm. and then birds and uh, deforestation, mm -hmm. I mean, we, 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 I feel like we, Ode, we actually have the food. You know, this country has for the longest time, time actually been named as an agricultural country, Emmanuel. And we have the seen in era. the rural areas mm -hmm. the fact that farmers are, are already getting into it. And you wonder, is this an artificial crisis? The fact that the government actually buys maize from the farmers, that is sufficient to feed us. They let this maize go bad in um, their silos and then say we do not have food, we need to import more. What, what is the sense in this, though? You know, when Kinjuri was still the Minister for Agriculture, mm -hmm. told us that there were cartels in the maize industry who are going to plant maize outside Kenya, Uganda, and our neighboring countries. Mm -hmm. Then they flood the market so that those people, the locals who are planting maize, they have no market where to sell their products mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. They want to control the uh, maize industry. Mm -hmm. But he, did, he, he never did anything to, to stop that. He just let it continue. All he did was just do the press conferences. Mm -hmm. We had the yellow maize from Mexico that came just a week. or Was it two days? Mm -hmm. from after. Mexico <laughs> after they, they allowed maize to come in. Yeah. Two days later there was mm -hmm. a ship at Mombasa port. Mm -hmm. That's why I started wondering if the ship is further than a jet. You, you, know, you know Emmanuel even as you mentioned that mm. the fact that some farmers in the country right now are decrying the fact that some of their food, some of their produce is actually going bad. It's being thrown away because um, buyers are not getting to buy their produce or it makes me wonder is maize the only thing we consume in this country though you gali haina mboga bwana so lazima ujue kwamba ugali is our staple food so lazima maize ikue part and parcel of this mm -hmm. uh, I, I i come from a place that where uh, maize is a hub uh, mm -hmm. uh, but the problem is the cartel the cartels uh, are in between uh, destroying the country when it comes to food uh, uh, reservations and mm -hmm. uh, the people uh, about Wanapata this, uh, this food. Uh, we've had a lot of complaints from not getting their due, not getting their rightful uh, due mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, the, the, the pricing and even uh, supply. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, for now, we can't, you can't tell me that uh, the government is going to destroy mm -hmm. uh, tax of maize uh, to, to take it to another company, I mean, for fuel, and then mm -hmm. buy externally. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, I mean, it's only but for now, I, I'll just say, Mm -hmm. It's not something that uh, we are supposed to be to be thinking about. All right. Actually, food food is the the only thing right now every Kenyan need because uh, because lockdowns lockdowns left right and center. So and, and, really and, and, and 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 and, and, and order, even as we move on, Emmanuel, maybe we should make ensure that our next president is a lawyer president. I feel like <laughs> I hear you guys do not play with the food. <laughs> the fact that you guys don't joke with your food, maybe this is the next direction we need to go to. And speaking of politics in the country, Ode, political temperatures in the country have been rising so much so that some people have actually been caught in the crossfire. Most recent victim. Kindiki Kidure. <coughs> you know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is a kid situation. <laughs> He's the only person to have to have <laughs> sneezed on there. Now there is a cough on there. Now you are next. Keith was the first one. Okay. You know uh, the 
kihiki what is his name again kithure kindiki, kindiki. Yeah? kithure kindiki story mm -hmm. is not new because you know when the covid came the temperatures are at least went low people <laughs> temperatures wakasema is the reggae reggae has been stopped walikuwa wanachokoza nyuki so here we are uh mukomen of the first one to be eaten by the government he has been consumed uh mm -hmm. sonko is, the, is in the jaws is being chewed mm -hmm. Ki, kindiki was uh, swallowed today you can imagine tracy mm -hmm. was it 54 members versus seven <laughs> and, 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 and and my Bye. biggest question for you ode is is this the right time to politic in the middle of a pandemic no. that's a million dollar question i mean we are not supposed to be thinking of uh, politicking mm -hmm. while there's a pandemic. I mean, let it come post-pandemic, let it come post-corona. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, uh, I strongly believe that uh, health is more important. Imagine if all the senators were sick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or and, if we all died of COVID-19, who will they have to rule over? So for me, I, would, uh, I think those have misplaced priorities, but uh, for the party, mm -hmm. maybe it is, uh, it is something or uh, it's, a para, it's, it's paramount for the party. Mm -hmm. But for Kenyans uh, in general, I mean, uh, making, making Kindichi go home for, I mean, different reasons mm -hmm. doesn't, I mean, doesn't, it doesn't even hit me as a, a common mananchi mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to Corona and food. It only hit the, 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 the party. I mean, utaskia o, watu wangu, watu wangu, watu wangu. And the song will be the same uh, till 2022. I agree Why with you. And, and that leaves us with the question, if our ni watu wa, watu wetu sisi as Kenyans, who is going to, you know, push the agenda for the common monainchi? Because at, as at we are right now, the, it gives me a headache to hear of our political class speaking of BBI Emmanuel. Right now, BBI. <laughs> you know, before we go to BBI, mm -hmm. the one thing that I, I really laughed a lot after watching the ki, 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 uh, ki what is its name again? Kithura Kindiki. Kithura Kindiki. Kithura. Kithura. Uh -huh. It was Senator Millicent Omanga. The other day I saw, I saw her in the dailies uh, with a funny caption. Mm -hmm. Then when she stood up to say, okay, I vote yes, uh, so many people are were well, left in stitches. Mm -hmm. So, talk of BBI, um, I think it was, it was planned earlier and it will just go on as, uh, as it was planned. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing can stop it. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so you, 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 you're saying even Corona has not stopped reggae as we were? It had posted, mm -hmm. then the anti reggae people, mm -hmm. Wakachokoza, mm -hmm. they tried to mock the reggae guys. Mm -hmm. So the reggae guys decided to show them, okay, reggae is still playing. Now mm -hmm. you can see it's playing very loud. Mm -hmm. For me, when it comes to BBI, I, I, I don't have anything to say because uh, I, I mean, mm -hmm. it, when these, these are my personal uh, sentiments that uh, it is a, it's a predetermined uh, cause. So, I mean. All right, guys, even as we take this short break, the fact that realignments are actually happening, we have seen coalitions in the last two, three weeks. But what really surprised me and caught my eye is Tanga Tanga allied MPs coming out to say, Tutapatana <laughs> Mbinguni. Our political reporter, Liz Musuku, was actually telling me that these guys were actually saying, <laughs> right now, Pre, former President Moye and f former President um, Jomo yeah, Kenyatta, Kesiao right now Ukojui Mepamba Moto. So <laughs> even if whatever it is that were to happen, we will see them. They will see each other on the other side. You know why they are saying yeah? Trapatana mm -hmm. The leader said he is investing in heaven. Yeah? The, the leader. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, this is what our editorial team is reading for you. Take a look at the highlights and then we will be back after this short break.
So now Kenya has become a debt nation. In the last one week, and I hope you put Mutahi's voice to that, in the last, <laughs> in the last one week, Kenya has had over 120 billion in loans approved. The week before, 79 billion. The government is spending money like a new wife, only that we, the husband, are broke people all day. Uh, the those who approve that budget and take long is this week. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are already having problems with their debt. Mm -hmm. really like we can no longer we can no longer borrow as a, as Kenya as a country we can no longer borrow. But uh, we are being given this more uh, we call them soft loans mm -hmm. uh, by entity. Uh, yeah. But again, these soft loans they are not being used. As per the way it's supposed to be used. If even even just, before uh, we go to the usage order and how well th this money is actually being utilized, Emmanuel, yes. we are borrowing to pay. Like it's like unachukua fuliza, ndolipe mshwari, ndolala branch. What is going on in our country, though? No, our country, mm -hmm. we were auctioned a long time ago. Wow. So we have to stay <laughs> with the debt, uh, we, with debts. Mm -hmm. Because uh, calling 107 billion a soft loan, mm -hmm. then uh, two days later or three days later, you have another 4, bil four billion mm -hmm. uh, loan to fight the so called locusts. Uh, it's, it seems that every, every ministry is trying to make its own budgets, then borrow. Mm -hmm. Then I, I'm, I'm wondering why is the World Bank just accepting to give away Kenyans mm -hmm. the money, yet they know returning the money it won't be that easy. You know, you know, the Chinese Emmanuel, are waiting somewhere for us. Mm -hmm. Just a few years from now, the Chinese will be here asking for their money. Mm -hmm. And believe you me, they'll get it, whatever and, and, means. And back to what you were speaking on, Odi, the fact that we. Mm -hmm have been using this money in very wasteful ways. We have seen in this week that a hospital that was constructed in Nakuru County has been turned into a chicken pen. Someone has actually leased out the space and the, the construction that was actually supposed to be a hospital is now someone's private Nyumbaya Kuku. I'm, I'm wondering, this is what we are borrowing for? Yes. Yes, actually, uh, that is... Uh, in Kenya, it, this is a country where you wake up one day, you come up with your budget, uh, you give, uh, you, on paper it's a very unique and very nice and interesting uh, project, mm -hmm. but when it comes to implementation, it becomes a hard nut to crack. Even in Kitale, the, the referral hospital has been, it, it's, it has uh, stalled. Mm -hmm. it, it's no longer there. they actually asking for more money, yet uh, billions of money were uh, was put into that project that right now we can say okay, for implement, implementing the good uh, uh, written proposal that were in, or in paper mm -hmm. it becomes a problem we, we can't we, we can't a simple project like a hospital we we need i mean we need people to come from abroad experts to come from abroad and show us uh, how to construct a uh, uh, a hospital using uh, less material. And, and I feel I mean, like um, but in some of those the country, experts, Emmanuel, they, yes. mm -hmm, the fact that um, even as you speak of this hospital, the desperation is beginning to show, you know. The fact that Kenyans yesterday, did you see this trending hashtag, Economic Recovery Council? <laughs> and the fact that <laughs> nothing of the sort was actually happening. It just shows you how desperate Kenyans are feeling that the government really needs to take steps towards helping our economy recover, not just kill us, uh, BBI, you know. I told you the government might have the goodwill to do that. Mm -hmm. They'll borrow money to fund devolution. Then you'll mm -hmm. we'll hear a gate somewhere has been constructed at 10 million. Mm -hmm. A wheelbarrow somewhere has been bought at 100,000 mm -hmm. each and all such stuff. So you find uh, the government is trying to make a lot of effort mm -hmm. to ensure the so-called devolution works yeah but those people who are there who mm -hmm. are supposed to implement the devolution itself mm -hmm. they're the one trying to misuse the funds mm -hmm. everything you find so and so daughter yeah. has so many millions in her account mm -hmm. because she does business the business that we don't know mm -hmm. then uh, you wonder which country you are in but and, then and you i really hope I, I, it's a unique country yeah it is a unique country as Ode put it <laughs> and i really hope we will be our government is going to wake up, yeah, because this is Iwa Melala completely. Now, as we are on our last leg of this conversation, Ode, 
let us sample feedback kidogo then we get back to this wilson otieno ojuang you say you're watching us from tudor mombasa county thank you so much for joining us we have joshua lingera as well from thika kiboko thank you for keeping us company martha minor has an interesting question here she says ask mutahi kagwe if i can eat my third term school fees peacefully please <laughs> i think ms yes she means is magoha who is actually in charge of education and this is a story i know that we are following up on as soon as details are here with us we will be able to share with you and even as we finish guys a lot has been happening in around our, the countries that actually border us in tanzania burundi sudan as well imano briefly what what is going on in Sudan they actually have to pay for abetting terrorism yeah yes before i go to sudan just to respond to the feedback someone said about the school fees to mutai mm -hmm. uh, do you know that mku has reduced uh, school fees to all its students yes they actually have we will be following on that so yeah. talk of sudan mm -hmm. uh, sudan is said to have harbored the terrorists who came to nairobi and tanzania mm -hmm. bombed the cities and mm -hmm. killed uh, so many hundreds of people mm -hmm. and uh, the money that is supposed to pay it's in trillions mm -hmm. one point something trillion yeah so i'm wondering if these people will pay but they have to pay if they well if they, if if they, they cannot afford to pay manual if they cannot afford phys they have physical oil. cash yeah they have oil. Kila mutu mafuta. this is the, the, the much this <laughs> is the oil that <laughs> is worth the amount of money mm -hmm. now Ori, i don't know if you have seen this the fact that Idris Sultan, a comedian and actor in Tanzania, has been arrested for laughing at President <laughs> Magufuli's old suit. TBT. Yeah, TBT photos, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm wondering, really now, that is that Tanzania, guys, really? <laughs> let, me, let, let me not uh, say that might uh, bring an issue. But again, uh, Every person in this world has a right of expression. Mm -hmm. I, I actually agree because, with you. Uh, mm -hmm. If I see... Yes, please continue. Because if, if I see your photos, uh, if I see Inonda's photos, the TBT back in high school, mm -hmm. and then in, in short Kisha, I send him and tell him, hey, bro, only mm -hmm. call me big bye. <laughs> I mean, what, what, what? I mean, how are you supposed to come and uh, and arrest? <laughs> well, I, I feel like Imano. Yes. Jeff, I don't know. I, I, I feel like President Magufuli this took this rather personally. Everybody had TBT photos. I will we be sharing joke. mine on my on my on my timeline. I hope you, you guys will be sharing as well. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't have one. No way. There is someone with your TBT photos <laughs> somewhere. There has to be someone. <laughs> Hmm? Yeah. I'm, Kenyan. I'm trying to imagine the way Kenyans uh, uh, do their Photoshop with our president and yes. our other dignitaries uh, in Kenya. When mm -hmm. a come up with such status, mm -hmm. I mean, if I mean, uh, if Magufuli and Gekua are in Kenya, I know. Then, uh, Gekua, yeah. We've made fun of Moi, fun of uh, Kibaki, fun, fun of everyone, and the everyone. fact that Emmanuel, mm. I saw recently someone on Twitter was actually referring to President Uhuru Kenyatta as borrowing because of Kenya's <laughs> borrowing, <laughs> borrowing appetite. <laughs> the stunts that us Kenyans pull, I, I feel like China. <laughs> <laughs> these guys would have a field trip <laughs> being Kenyan citizens for a week. One <laughs> thing that uh, I like about our president. Yes. He never takes things personal. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are having we are having people even mimicking mimicking their Twitter accounts. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our 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 I mean our officials and they just come and say I mean that is not my Twitter account. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know that I like about our Kenyan our Kenyan leaders like our president. Mm -hmm. He can never make it personal that I mean nitafutieni huyu ambaye alichora alichora kwa gazeti ama alichora kwa kwa Twitter through uh, through uh, Photoshop. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I actually agree with you, and I really hope um, that even as the border tension continues to cool off, President Magufuli has a legea kidogo, yeah? I feel like <laughs> well, are... arresting this guy was extremism, mm. yeah? yeah? Now, to trending topics of the week, guys. Emmanuel, are yeah. you part of a boys' club? Mm. <laughs> Ask the question. <laughs> Only you're laughing like you're part of a boys club somewhere. 
Ok. Uh... <laughs> are you? Are you or not? I must say this, eh? Mm-hmm. I must say, uh, if you are over 18 mm-hmm. and uh, you are you are you are upright and you know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. If it's fine, it's fine. Like any uh, the the issue of uh, people uh, getting into your private life, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, boys club people have a lot of clubs and uh, people share a lot. Mm-hmm. For me, I have my I have my confidante in 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 the media industry. You wait so until those screenshots mean, uh, leak. You will know that this is actually you, no, this, 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 is, this is not in confidence. You will know. <laughs> Let's wait for the right round for the screenshots. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and moving on, especially now that you mentioned that this is not our business. Yeah. <laughs> have you seen this clip where the DO is actually telling chiefs that they will be responsible for pregnancies <laughs> in the region in case young girls are caught pregnant? Have you seen it, Emmanuel? I think it shouldn't yes. be the chiefs, mm-hmm. but the uh, the parents of those children. Exactly, my thoughts exactly, you know. Because, you know, a chief is mm-hmm. just one person covering no, I, a very I, large I, I, area. I strongly agree with the, with the, with the uh, administrative, uh, the provincial commissioner. All right, okay. Oh, it was an, a, a provincial commissioner, sorry. Uh-huh. Continue. Okay, uh, me, I strongly agree because mm-hmm. these chiefs, are the ones to put uh, order in their areas. I mean, uh, when when things happen, the first person they run to is a chief. And this chief take uh, Akikuja a home way so that the, 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 the kid can uh, a, a, a fit way. It becomes a chief's business. Mm-hmm. Oh, then do you mean so, those people, who, who, those <laughs> children, let's say in Mount Elgon last, so, last year during mm-hmm. the KCP, we had so many children who are impregnant. You want to say those, all of them impregnant, it were it, try to bribe the chief? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. The partner should be held responsible. I actually agree with you, Emmanuel, the fact mm-hmm. that uh, during this pandemic period and the fact that children are actually at home right now, Parents, please, this is not the time to, you well, know. A chief is just one person yes. covering a very a large area. Mm-hmm. And uh, remember, you have you have three daughters or three sons. Yes. When they go out, do you follow them? Apparently, ap- apparently in this in this area, mm. <laughs> the chief is supposed to follow it, people. It is a very hard stand to come up with. But again, mm-hmm. it trickles down to uh, uh, the uh, uh, behavioral, behavior change communication mm-hmm. when it comes to so, give information to I actually I, I actually and, agree uh, agree with you guys Emmanuel even I, as we close this show because Friday it is coming up in a few minutes Sasia Frederick says he's watching from United <laughs> Moja I hope Mulipata Maji thank you so much for watching yeah <laughs> and, mm-hmm, and and it, it um, probably might be tomorrow Abu Bakar is in my ear I hope uh, have you guys confirmed Abu Bakar if it is tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> on Sunday <laughs> it's on Sunday, yeah? Oh, yeah, on Sunday. So he actually says it's on Sunday. Now, I don't know why nobody is excited by the fact that Monday is a public holiday. And uh, uh, maybe because we have been staying at home for too long. Yeah, we've had public holidays for close to 60 consecutive days. So mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, people are not taking it seriously. But you know, Eid, uh, people have been celebrating it in a very wide way, very mm-hmm. good manner. Mm-hmm. But this uh, this COVID has really slowed it down. Yeah, it, it actually has Emmanuel. Yeah. And uh, how because do you say? It's, it's Mubarak. Is that what you say? Yeah, Eid Mubarak. Yeah, so mm-hmm. to all our viewers, mm-hmm. thank you so much for watching. And that is all the time we had for In Other News tonight. Remember, In Other News is Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 8 p.m. And coming up Friday, tonight starts in Ghana with entertainment from Afro Soul Music. Thought, so if that is your kind of genre, stick I around. I the coffin crew. Yeah? I, I <laughs> Thank you for watching. <laughs> See you Monday.